Elizabeth E. Warren here today with a wellspring of knowledge and information on all things kids, crafts, and ideas. Um, today, we're going to do a quick little art project with tempera paint, um, a stencil of your choice. I'm going to do a holiday stencil, so I'm going with a big spider, uh, and a couple of paint brushes, and we're good to go. And a heavy piece of paper would be good. I'm going to be using a small canvas that big. So, you know, what is that? Eight by 10, eight by 12, maybe. A little smaller than a piece of paper. Um, so to get started, my paper's all ready to go. I have down a, a sheet underneath it, so I don't make a big mess. But the beauty of this particular paint project is there's not a whole lot of prep or preparation. So I don't have to get out all the paint trays and a lot of paint brushes, which is nice for someone who has, you know, 40 kids in a program. So first I'm gonna start with some black tempera. And I'm just gonna put a glob, that's the art term, the glob, about a quarter size worth on the bottom corner. And I'm gonna do this on a vertical, on a up and down, <laughs> so the length is taller because I want it to be a sky when I'm done. And then I'm gonna go with this purple tempera, which I uh, really like purple, it's my favorite color. So we're going with that one. Oh, and by the way, if you like this video, will you please like and subscribe? That would be awesome, thank you. All right, and then I'm gonna go with I'll go dark blue next and then to the light blue. But you could do them in any order you really like. I think just as long as your black is at the bottom and then it's kind of a night sky and then some light blue. I'll show you my quarter size globs here in half a minute. And then there you go. Now you've got all your paint laid out. Here's what that's gonna look like. Ooh, if I tilt it that way, I could have a big mess. So let me turn that around that way. Anything, oh, almost. It's really hard trying to figure out my camera situation. There we go. I tried one yesterday, that did not work. Well, it worked if you wanted to see a tiny little square. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Now I'm just gonna spread this black on the bottom across. Here we go. Spread, spread, spread which, you know, it's nice. And sometimes if you pick up your, if it's on a canvas, you can pick it up so you can get those edges nice and easy. All right, black. Now I'm onto the purple. And it is going to fade together, the colors, which is nice, nice blend there. So it just kind of goes into each other. And then I'm onto the blue. Oh, that's pretty. You know, and well, you could probably use acrylic paints, but I just find that the, for this project that the tempers will clean up so easy and I don't have to worry about big spots on clothing for people. That's always good. And now I'm on to my last color. Just spreading that out across the top, blending it in a little. I know you can't see that blending happening, but once you do it, it will be, it will be happening. I am, um, I'm going to put just a little more black on the bottom. It seems that the canvas just likes to turn it to a gray color and it won't hold all of its black color, which is a bummer. So here we go. Let's see if I can get a little more black on there. Just a touch more. There we go. All right. Now we're talking. All right, and then on the bottom, once you have your canvas looking something like that, black, purple, blues, then I'm going to put in some little highlights of black grass at the bottom to give it a little more character, a little more oomph. I'm gonna take the narrow side of this same brush and I'm just gonna go up with it like that. And there we go, some tall, some short, random pieces. Let me show you. So kind of like that. 
All right, then I'm gonna put this brush down, call that good. And then I'm gonna take a stencil that I made of this lovely spider. Now, you know, when I came in and I thought, oh, I'll just draw out that spider and cut it right out. Well, I forgot that I was making a stencil. So I was gonna to have to cut the inside out, which takes a little longer. So remember that, <laughs> remember that when making stencils. Um, and I just made it out of an old uh, manila folder and it's held up for at least 10 uses. The thing is though, is that when I put it down and the paint is wet, then it kind of, you, you have to wipe it off before you can use it again, or you'll just be transferring that color. To cut this out, if you were to use an X-Acto knife, would be really your best method, I'm sure. But I don't have any X-Acto knives in my room, so I used my scissors, which will work a little more time consuming, but it'll get the job done. So I'm going to take the black tempera, and I'm just going to put a little glob over here. I have a little paint holder for it. You could just put it on your paper if you wanted. And you can put your stencil, you could do for this holiday, a witch, a pumpkin, uh, spiders, Dracula, whatever stencil you can come up with. I'm going to put mine so it's climbing up. I'm going to lay it right on there. Bam, just like that. Kind of push it down a little, but kind of gently, else you'll make fingerprints underneath. And then I have a lot of these nice brushes in my room. Um, and I like to use them to do this kind of a dabbing motion so you don't get the ink or the paint rather all underneath uh, your cutout of your stencil. Try to keep it just where you need it to be. So I'm going to dip into the black, black on, and then I'm just going to go bum, 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 dot, dot, dot. And I hold down the, the legs in different places where I can. Yes, my fingers will end up with a little black paint, but... Love and tempera, just going to come right off for me. So that's good. And then I'm going to hold that leg down and start up there. That one down. You know, and they make those really nice uh, silicone stencils. I think they're silicone. It's a hard or even a, a floppy kind of a plastic material. But when you're at home and you don't have one and you don't plan on going to the store this 20 miles away and Amazon's going to take two days, trusty paper and a pair of scissors and you're good to go. Won't last quite as long because those other ones, you know, they wash off and that, that is the beauty of them. But it's good to know you don't have to. And I think you could even use some cookie cutters might work for good stencils, the kind that don't have a cover top. They're just kind of a more of a kid's style. You could just draw that out too. Uh -oh. and since I don't have my cameras working quite right, I'm working up on a platform, which is curious. And so, all right, okay. I am almost there with all of my legs painted and my body. How many legs does the spider have? Eight, yes, eight, you are correct, very good. All right, now for the unveiling, I'm going to peel off my paper. And now both sides will be painting, so wherever you put it down, make sure it's somewhere you don't mind putting paint on. Oh, pretty good, pretty good, Spidey. All right, let me show you this spider. The one bottom leg looks like maybe he had to walk through something a little bit sticky and it picked up. But there you go. And the colors are much more vibrant on my paper than what shows up on the computer. I don't know exactly why, but there you have it. So it's pretty quick and easy. The kids like it. It's a quick finish. Um, that's always good for them. Sometimes they want to get in there and do it quick and go. So it's a good project. I give it a thumbs up. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you make some. Once again, please give me a like and subscribe and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.